folks. Hi, uh, just a quick two-liner about the company so that I avoid the sales pitch. Uh, we are into manufacturing uh, two-wheelers and then obviously we sell them after that, right? And we also have a connected charging grid which, you know, sort of takes away the charging anxiety from you, post you buy it. But where our work starts is after we, you know, uh, after the customer buys the vehicle. Where there are different promises that we make to customer that, hey, uh, we'll give you a connected scooter, we'll give you a lot of features out of this. And this is where we see, uh, you know, some application of Rust that we have already gotten started. There are some POCs that are going, uh, going on. And we have Abhilash with me, my colleague. Uh, Tof is going to talk a bit about uh, how, it, how it has been for us to uh, use Rust. Uh, just to talk about different promises that I just said, right? Uh, to set a context right now, every vehicle today that we have is generating roughly about a GB worth of data before compression and sending it to the cloud. So this is the volume that we're talking about, right? And then most of this data gets generated uh, when the riding actually happens. And we have a promise of syncing all the rides that a customer takes within 15 minutes. So imagine the data that is getting generated with a lot of sensors that are on the uh, vehicle, which needs to be processed and then sent to the cloud and then created as a ride session and then uh, sent to their uh, app under 15 minutes, right? And then, as I said, multiple sensors and finally, not just rides, right? Around the ride, around the usage of the vehicle around the efficiency that we can leverage from the vehicle is all computed in the vehicle and all of this also needs to be you know leveraged as an intelligence layer as such now this is just about one vehicle if i blow this up and look at from a bird's eye view what does the scale look like right there are roughly about 80000 scooters now why is this important because though the talk looks like hey i'm trying to use rust in in the edge devices some of our pocs are also around let's say can i use this in cloud because when I say resource constraint, the constraint is everywhere, whether it's just the hardware limitation that you have or the cost that is involved in provisioning the resources for it to crunch this data, right? So hence the scale. So roughly 80,000 scooters, roughly half a million of rides per day. And if I look at the raw data that gets ingested in our hot data storage, it's roughly 1 billion per second, right? Now, going towards where we actually hit a snag on the vehicle, right? One is the latency. Uh, again, network is something that is not in our control, right? And anything that we add to the data latency in terms of taking the data and then sending it to the cloud add to the latency of all the promises that we have to the customer, right? And then looking at the hardware, we have 2 GB of RAM and then quad core processor and then any cost that actually comes into processing this data is an additional cost for us to maintain this in the pipeline. Uh, and yes, like if you look at somebody who is into the business of, you know, creating a hardware uh, based systems, right? The term bill of material is something which is sacrosanct right now, where you're trying to reduce this as much as possible because that is what defines your sustenance around this. And let's say if I have to change my uh, hardware ecosystem, let's say I'm going lower and lower in terms of space that I have, right? How do I put the same capability across multiple devices that are created? That is where we see, hey, like, are there, uh, you know, technology who, which I can actually use in these constrained uh, ecosystem. So we just thought, ki, hey, we, we, were, we have used C, Go, and multiple other languages, but for a few of the components, we saw ki, hey, like there is a need for us to look for multiple uh, other possible parallel systems that are out there. So what kind of problems that we're after, right? One is utilizing whatever resources that are available in the system right now, be it uh, you know uh, RAM or CPU, adding more intelligence because imagine processing all this data in the cloud. Now, there is a cost to it and why not just do it in the uh, scooters because there is enough resources that is already available over there, right? And finally, do it real time so that I can reduce the latency and finally find a framework which is quite safe enough to do all of this. From here on, I, I have Avilash uh, who will talk more about how did we discover Rust and why. Going forward, yeah, like just my, like my colleague told, what is, why Rust? Why, why do we even need to use Rust on our platform? As you can see on the meme, one of my greatest nightmares is someone calling me up and telling, okay, your CPUs, your process is taking too much CPU and memory. We don't want it anymore, right? So we, we want something that consumes as less amount of resources as possible. It is CPU, it may be memory. Sometimes it is even disk IOs. So what we have seen is Rust. Uh, we have one application or one module on our edge device that has been written in Rust and been running with Rust for, I think, around four to five years now. And it is pretty stable. And out of all the modules in our edge device, it is the one that is consuming the least amount of footprint. It is in terms of CPU and memory, right? So that is where now we are looking towards, okay, 
how is that rust is uh, taking so much less resources as compared to other languages and how we can use it further right and also we need a framework uh, so when i look at rust uh, and i look at rust compiler it's not just that it consumes less amount of resources i personally feel it is one of those languages that enforces that ideology in developers saying uh, code safely it's not about getting your code out and making it work i feel rust compiler i am very happy about rust compiler because it screams at me as much as possible more than anyone right and this this is something that is really good i feel so this establishes and gives us a framework where we know ki if something compiles i have the confidence that it is going to work it is not going to fail this is extremely important for me right and on our hd devices what are the things we do uh, one of the major things we do is we do data processing data processing is at a really high scale that we do uh, with uh, i think a lot of data coming around and we are also looking towards doing data computation right yeah so now coming to this uh, if someone sees the second point on rust he would really ask uh, how is it lowering dat because one of the biggest problems with rust is it has a steep, steep learning curve i wouldn't say problem but the learning curve is definitely steep uh, for me someone who picked up rust a year ago coming from i would say c sharp and go when i started to write my first write rust program it took me i think about uh, half a day to get it to compile right and so when you look at it how does rust really lower the tot uh, tat is what you ask what i would look at it as even though the steep there is a steep learning curve once you climb it and uh, the way it increases uh, awareness in developers or it gives safety in terms of type safety or in terms of compile time errors uh, it is re it really helps us uh, doing incremental builds faster right that is where i really see it help and also uh, i would say the community of rust is growing but it is very good uh, i can see most of the use cases there are crates available already and really good community and really uh, i would say active community is there in rust so that is one very good reason and being a iot uh, mainly a manufacturing device most of our devices be it scooters charging infrastructures end of line devices we are always uh, looking at different hardwares that we can use because we cannot always agree on okay this is the hardware that we are going to use and this is what we i want my programs to run on we want to make sure ki all my programs are capable of running on multiple hardwares and support so this is where rust really helps uh, because it basically uses the LL, llvm compiler and it can compile a better llvm compiles it rust compiles and wherever c runs rust can run so this really helps me and also now we are looking at writing rust for microcontrollers we are we need to see how that goes and it's pretty easy to cross compile it across different architectures so these are the main reasons i would say why we are looking at rust and why we are using rust as of now now before going further i would like to give you guys a clear birds by view of the architecture right and the pink ones are the pocs that we are looking at and also what we are uh, the blue one is what we are using as of now in our entire architecture i would say the main single point of failure or single the main important aspect is sending data to cloud this is where we have chosen rust to be used in the module this data exporter i would say is what what it is doing and what it is capable of what it is doing is parsing the different data that is being generated by the vehicle and data generated it has very high speeds we see data at every 20 milliseconds i would say and also we uh, this data needs to be processed before i send it to cloud i cannot really send it to cloud at that rate right so i need my application that is capable and safe that can read data at this uh, high speed that can process it serialize it deserialize it without much much compromises and uh, send it to cloud and also uh, so this is what this data exporter is doing it is having a correct M uh, mqtt connection that is kept open and it is continuously reading the data processing it serializing it and sending it and what we are using to uh, what we are using is rumqtt i would say rust mqtt a very good library in rust that is uh, extremely efficient i would say we have been using it for 3 years and this entire uh, i would say this uh, data exporter i would say even at uh, i uh, rates at 2000 3000 messages per second uh, hardly takes around 1 to 2% cpu and 0.6 mb of ram so it's really efficient now given that this has been really working for working out for us so where we are looking to use rust right we are also we are not only looking to use rust on edge but also on cloud 
So uh, when you look at cloud, the data that we send from our vehicles is huge. I would say around 138 billion records and each record being, I would say 1.5 KB. So around 60 TB per day is what amount of data that comes in, right? And this data is not really, all the data is not really how we want it. We definitely need to process it. So we need something that is, uh, that consumes less resources, but does it equally fast. Uh, and uh, it, uh, yeah, at least if not faster, equally fast. So we are looking at that where we are looking to use Rust for data processing on our pipelines to process JSON data and to convert it to Parquet so that we can query it elsewhere, right? And why we are looking at it? Because the solution we have now is through PySpark, which basically looks at, uh, it collects the JSON data, JSON gzip objects, and parses it and uh, unzips it, converts the JSON to Parquet and writes it to a file. And we are looking towards us because Rust seems to be doing better at it. There is a blog, uh, I would say, I would, uh, I'll share the link where we see that a Rust application does the same thing at, I think around one third the memory of whatever, one sixth the memory of whatever Python can do, right? That is where we are looking to do it and looking towards the POC. And, and one of the pro projects that we are also looking on edge is to start using Rust to do, do computations on edge. It's not really, uh, so there are two parts where I mentioned, right? We are now doing data processing and sending things to cloud. And this data, uh, we are obviously using on cloud to derive certain analytics, certain results, right? For example, write metrics, charge metrics, et cetera, right? Processing this on cloud for a small scale is pretty straightforward. But when you look at the scale we are dealing at and the scale at which uh, the amount of data is growing, this we, we need a really good solution even on cloud. And it is not really optimal to do everything on cloud. We want to do things on edge. And of course, when I say edge, there is resource constraints on edge. We cannot, we are not given everything. I would say uh, every month, I would say every month on month, definitely something, some amount of resources is getting cut on edge because with respect to concern with bomb, right? Bill of materials. So we are looking to start doing computation on edge where we can do different algorithms or we can do different, uh, derive different analytics or insights from data on edge device rather than doing it on cloud. And for this, we need a comp, this is a computational heavy task. We need something that is not really going to hog our resources just to do this. This is where we see really good implementation of Rust. Cool. So this is the architecture as of now. So I mentioned about one of our modules that right now is on the vehicle. So what are the different things it does and what, what are we looking at, right? So it, it basically collects real time data from different peripherals. As I mentioned, so what is the rate of data? It's about one day, one message every 20 milliseconds, right? And this message is around one to 1.5 KB. And this needs to be, if you mind, it, this needs to be processed at on, on the edge, which has, I think, around two GB of RAM and not, not more than that. Of course, there are other applications that are running on it. So I would say I am generously given, I would say 5% of the computational uh, mechanism that is available to do all this. And we have been running in Rust. This application essentially collects the data, deserializes it, where we are using SERDA, and processes it. There's no complex operation happening here. It just deserializes it, batches them in memory. So obviously, we need something that is not memory intensive as well, right? And after batching it, we are serializing the data. The serialization protocol can change, right? And once I serialize, I publish it, publish it to cloud. This is what is happening. So we see that this uh, this uh, module is uh, though being memory intensive it uh, we had a module in go which was i think using around 6 mb of memory ram uh, 6 mb of memory to do all this once we ported it in rust we see rust uses just 0.7 mb to do the same thing nothing more right so this really helps us and of course to maintain a uh, communication to mqtt we are using rumqtt which is doing a con which is maintaining a continuous com connection to the cloud this is so, uh, I would say this library is very uh, lightweight that we don't even see it using anything, right? And also we, we are looking, so we, uh, encryption on edge devices is really important. And we are, we essentially, there is some C code that will come in when you look at edge devices. Everything cannot be written in uh, other languages, right? So we definitely want, are looking at having FFIs that we can access different C functions as well. And looking at intelligence on Rust, exactly. Uh, like I mentioned, we are looking towards having a module that is uh, capable of doing complex computations on the edge device with, by consuming, consuming as less memory as possible. 
this is uh, most of the computations would definitely include data science it may be uh, rust is also when we looked at rust in a data science perspective we did not expect much but what we found is rust is also actually very good for data science it has quite good support for ml libraries not all but it is definitely growing and the very basics like matrix linear algebra etc it is this is definitely supported in rust and it is actually much better performing in rust and it's as good as c to be very honest yeah also we are looking at a safety layer when we write algorithms we want it to be memory safe we want it to be we, we want to know before actually putting it in production okay what might go wrong this is where rust really helps us it it's type safety ownership model and how the rust i would say the rust compiler is really the only one you need to even write a good language how good it is how detailed is it this is where we really see it helping us in actually putting out code that we know for a fact is completely stable right so we did do some tests to see uh, as a poc to see how uh, let's say if we write our computation modules in rust how it really helps us and this really shocked me such that i did a few more iterations after seeing the results just to ensure right so we did this test where the test is essentially where we started uh, multiplying to nine cross nine matrices uh, across a number of iterations, right? And we are seeing okay, how does Rust perform for us, and how does Python? And a very close competitor which we also use is Go. How does these perform with us? Because this this is relevant to us essentially because the matrix multiplication is computation intensive. Any any algorithms I put on the cloud is going to be computa computation intensive, right? So as you can see the results, we can see key Rust definitely consumes lesser CPU than Go, about 70 to 78 percent lesser. But the memory, if you see, it's almost 70 percent lesser that is consumed by Rust to perform the same operation, and the execution time is 50 percent lesser than Go, right? But the really shocking thing is when I look at Python, which is taking 190 seconds to do what Rust and Go did in two seconds and four seconds. So this this actually backs us and pushes us forward to actually look at different POCs and different uh, applications coming on edge device. Yeah. Also, when you look at uh, the different other, I mentioned we are getting data from different peri peripherals, right? And where uh, edge device is also sort of a microservice architecture where there are different services doing different things in with the data. So we need some kind of a broker that does all this, some, something that actually is capable of getting data from one place to another place. But though it is very important, we don't want just something that is do, getting data from one place to another place, consuming a lot of resources. So we, uh, we built an IPC broker that can help with us, that needs to handle, I would say 2000 messages per second is yes, but I would say at high peaks, it's even 4000 to 5000 messages per second, JSON messages that it needs to handle, right? So when we were looking at it, we definitely, so we went with Go, we built a broker with Go that can do the, exactly the same. We, use as, we used 0MQ to do this. And on top of 0MQ, we added some intelligence into it that we needed, right? And once we put it on, uh, once we built it in Go and now we are looking at how Rust performs, right? We can easily see that Rust is again in this taking 5% lesser RAM and again, I would say around 60% lesser memory because memory is very important for us. So these two, uh, actually, I would say one is the benchmark and the other is something that's on the vehicle, it clearly demonstrates how Rust helps us. So if you see 0.42 MB of memory on Go and 0.4 MB on memory on Rust, why does it even matter to me? Now this 1.6 MB is something my computation engine can use to do some other. This 1.4 MB will enable me to put a more intelligent algorithm on the device, right? So this is why even 1% that I can find from anything is really important for me. This is where Rust really helps us. Yeah. So as I was saying, why does it all matter? Like when you look at uh, the Rust application that we have, it is consuming around 3 MB to 15 MB of RAM right now, right? And this application processes about 20,000 records. And this, uh, though, this, though intensive in data, I don't want this to consume every, everything. And even like when you look at it, even 3 MB to 15 MB matters to me a lot. It is a lot to me. And this, how much ever I can save here, I can actually give it to someone else to do a, more, a few more things. And as we saw in the benchmarks, we saw it executes 50% faster than Go. This is something that will be help me in cloud as well, right? When I am parsing my data, it's not just data from the vehicles, it, it's logs that is being generated, 
a lot of parsing going on. All this data parsing, if the execution time is faster, it reduces my cost. This is where it really helps. And as we also, the memory used by Rust is around 40 to 50 percent lesser, right? Cool. Uh, this is the future scope for different things we are looking at. Uh, do what we, or why we want. So the one module that we are using is now uh, the connect module that is actually uh, data, the data exporter. So looking at this, we are looking towards using Rust in very different other venues, right? And what are those different venues? We are looking towards migrating the entire data processing applications on edge. It's not just one, the different processing applications on edge towards Rust and see how it goes. And also the batch processing jobs on our uh, cloud. We are, we are definitely seeing how, uh, how we can replace that with Rust so that it uses less memory and less CPU, thereby uh, giving, more, giving me more and uh, saving me cost, right? And yep, uh, the other venue is data conversion of JSON to Parquet. Uh, parquet data is pretty easy to, uh, it's, it's what we need to process big data and it's good for aggregation. So we want a converter that converts JSON to parquet. And Rust seems to be do the trick here. We want to use Rust for that as well, right? And yeah, uh, as this says, evaluating scope for, scope for identifying least resources chips. So we are always looking out for how to reduce the bill of cost. And uh, so pretty intuitively, it is always by going to a chip that has lesser things on it and uh, makes uh, developers life a, more, a little more difficult, right? And so we want something that is capable of running on the barest of uh, chips, on something that, that really, so we are looking at chips which does not even have many of the, I would say uh, Linux system calls that will facilitate uh, me uh, doing the basic bare bone things. So we want to have a language which can also help us here and which can also run on the different uh, microchips, yeah. A few of these uh, things that we mentioned, we ran initial tests. If you guys see anomaly, just let us know. We would want to correct these tests because we are in the process of implementing intelligence on the edge. So whatever tests we might have done, we might be superficial at the moment, or it could be just random comparisons because we said, hey, we didn't implement the algo yet, right? So if, if you guys see that there are some suggestions that we can take, we will be, it'll be valuable. Any question? Uh, uh, just encryption. Yes. Uh, Sorry? Uh, just encryption. Yes. Uh, encryption. Yeah. So when you look at it, uh, when you look at edge devices, security is important, right? And we want our, uh, uh, I would say, uh, certificates or something on a hardware. And most of these hardware vendors come out with their own uh, applications that are capable of accessing this uh, hardware, right? And C is definitely what is right now that the vendors come out with. There is, uh, though Rust is getting evolved and we are looking towards it, I wouldn't say Rust is uh, being completely supported and used by all the vendors. So we definitely need something that can interface with C and use it. So that is where we are seeing uh, the FFI interface with the Rust and C. So I would say that is something that I would really look forward to see where our vendors and so looking at Amazon and Google coming up with their SDKs in Rust, I would definitely look towards a future where most of the things also have a Rust counterpart to it. Yeah. Thank you.